take a look at strategies for re-engaging patients with HIV and substance use disorder in care. There are lower rates of retention in care among people with substance use disorder, and people who inject drugs who identify as male have a lower viral suppression and care engagement rates compared with other people living with HIV. Individuals who inject drugs, their retention in care may be impacted by social determinants of health. In 2018, about 64% experienced homelessness and 21% had no health insurance. And a survey of participants in the CDC medical monitoring project showed that 79% of people who injected drugs had met, had unmet ancillary needs outside of HIV care. And most common needs identified were those including dental care, drug and alcohol treatment, transportation assistance, and also peer group support. People who inject drugs are often more likely to experience healthcare discrimination, often looked at as if they may be drug seeking or, um, or, or accessing services for um, reasons other than true medical care. The principle of harm reduction is any positive change as defined by the person at risk for harm. It really is about meeting people where they are and providing the tools and information that they need to keep themselves and those around them healthy. And the principle of harm reduction, in essence, provides non-judgmental care. It should fight discrimination. It does not necessarily require abstinence, but it's not against abstinence. And it doesn't attempt to minimize or ignore the real harm and danger associated with licit and illicit drug use. Harm reduction is really about understanding where the patient is in their own journey and then making sure that you are empowering them with the information they need to keep themselves as safe as possible. And it goes well beyond preventing HIV and viral hepatitis. We all practice harm reduction in our daily lives, whether it's going slightly above the, the, the speed limit and putting on our seatbelt or perhaps um, some other exercise that we all do every day. Medication for opioid use disorder often is, is considered a form of harm reduction. Syringe service programs also provide harm reduction services. When you combine mental health services with medication for opioid use disorders, that provides an even higher level of harm reduction care. Prevention of injection-related wounds or secondary infections, whether they're bacterial or viral, Overdose prevention and response is a critical piece of harm reduction. Practicing, practicing safer injection techniques with our patients and providing them with information around alternatives to injecting drugs, making sure all of our patients are immunized, that they've had their STI testing, that they have safer sex supplies, as well as access to case management, treatment for their substance use disorder and employment assistance all categorized as ways that we can reduce harm for our patients. What is medication for opioid use disorder? Well, it is a safe and effective way to suppress illicit opioid use. It improves physical and mental well-being, and it also has been demonstrated to improve adherence to antiretroviral therapy. Retention and medication for opioid use disorder programs have shown substantial reductions in the risk for overdose mortality, as well as a risk, as well as reductions in the risk for all cause mortality. Mortality. I think what is critical here is that medication for opioid use disorder is a very helpful adjunct and can be utilized to, um, to, to treat substance use disorder. However, it should not be viewed as a prerequisite for HIV treatment. Anybody who has HIV should be offered antiretroviral therapy, whether or not they continue to utilize um, substances or not. Examples of medication for opioid use disorder include things like buprenorphine, naltrexone, and methadone. There are a multitude of strategies to re-engage people with HIV who also have concomitant substance use disorder. Collaborating with community partners, particularly in individuals that may be running syringe service programs to identify patients who are living with HIV and linking them to care is critical. 
Um, approximately 50% of people who inject drugs use syringe service programs, which can also provide referrals to wraparound services, HIV treatment, medication storage, and medication for opioid use disorder. And they often utilize outreach that can be leveraged to re-engage patients who may not have been seen in the HIV clinic in a while. Also link to care individuals following release from incarceration, either peer navigation or through mobile health care with integrated services. Co-locating wraparound services is a really useful way to engage individuals, particularly in clinics that have very flexible hours. And I think really making sure that every patient who desires to engage in medication for opioid use disorder has access to it. And even co-locating HIV medication dispensing with, let's say, daily methadone medication dispensing is a really effective way to get patients both medications that are life-saving. And case management can always be useful to address the need for multidisciplinary care and, and things that are unique to people who happen to be injecting drugs. They may be more likely to experience homelessness or have challenges around transportation or access to financial resources. As I mentioned, combining HIV treatment with medication for opioid use disorder can be a really um, impactful way to provide treatment. There's an integrated care clinic at Zuckerberg San Francisco General that does exactly that. It provides care to patients with high rates of homelessness, substance use disorder, and mental health comorbidities. It provides medication for opioid use disorder, HIV primary care, mental health, directly observed therapy, as well as case management. And looking at the outcomes of this program demonstrates that integrated medication for opioid use disorder disorder and HIV care shows better HIV outcomes and engagement in care as measured by retention in care and virologic suppression. It's really important to locate resources for harm reduction in your community and as practitioners understand where we can be directing our patients so they can stay safe as possible. You want to be looking for syringe service or needle exchange programs, naloxone distribution locations, medication for opioid use disorder clinics, and local recovery alliances. And there are resources available to you on this slide that can point you in the right direction. So there are a multitude of strategies that have been most effective in, in the clinics that I've been privileged enough to work in that re-engage people living with HIV who also have substance use disorder. And I think a key piece of this has really been around community outreach. We've had a team of individuals that will, will partner with the syringe service program and other programs that provide medication for opioid use disorder. They will go out to the patient um, and and find them um, at, at their last known address if they've consented to, to allowing that to happen. We also have these partners that are situated at various different community sites that are um, we're working with us and we have we have paperwork in place that allows us to share protected health information between sites so we can find patients that way and outreach to them and offer them re-engagement. So I think having a big community network is often very help in providing um, a safety net for patients and an opportunity to give them multiple touch points to re-engage in, in HIV care as well as, as substance use disorder treatment.